A group of armed vigilantes is trading machine gun fire with members of the Knights Templar cartel. Until early this year, the town of Nueva Italia in Mexico's western state of Michoacán was under the control of the cartel. But after more than a decade of fear, something changed. These men armed themselves, and town by town, they began to drive the cartel out. They call themselves autodefensas, or self-defense forces. Their leaders claim that 20,000 have joined the armed movement. Their advance has been welcomed by many, but it's also plunged the state into a new kind of lawlessness. We just arrived to Michoacan and we've heard that four heads have been discovered on the steps leading to this church here in this small town of Sacan. It's a gruesome warning from the Templars as the autodefensas approach this town from the south. The bodies were taken away by the authorities before we arrived, but people here tell me they expect little more from the investigation. In Mexico, it's estimated 98% of crimes go unpunished. Failed by the state, the vigilantes say they've been left with no choice but to start a war. Se desquitan con gente inocente, mira. Aquí ir a Toralos, donde anden. La venganza es dulce. De hecho, uno pues los trata bien. We're here in Los Reyes to meet a wealthy avocado farmer called Paco. He left his orchards four months ago to coordinate vigilantes on the northern front. And I wanted to know why. ¿Qué hacen vano? Me quitan mis huertos, me balacean mi hermano, me matan ocho trabajadores. Entonces, entonces el gobierno qué hacía? No hacía nada. ¿Por qué? Porque el gobierno todo era templario. Son templarios. Todos corruptos. Todos corruptos, todos. Por eso es que yo decidí armarme y buscar gente que me apoye. Y gracias a Dios que vamos muy avanzados con todo esto. Many of the leaders of the autodefensa groups are businessmen like Paco. They own big lime or avocado plantations. Others are field workers or returning migrants. Some of them are even professional mercenaries. We followed Paco's group as they patrol the area around Los Reyes. It was immediately clear how much authority they've gained here. On the road, they forced this state prison van to stop. They believe that some state employees have been trying to get the Templars out of these towns, and that's why they stopped this car. The policemen put up no resistance. They were clear to drive on, but the power dynamic was obvious. These sorts of scenes are going on all across Michoacán, because for years government authorities have protected and aided cartel members. The Templars have made huge profits through drug trafficking and extortion, and used part of that money to pay off security forces. Everyone had to pay. Las drogas eran muy aparte. Todos ellos cobraban de, por ejemplo, del aguacate, de la zarzamora, cobraban de tiendas, cobraban de ganado, cobraban de todo, de la tortilla, de todo, cobraban cotas. If you didn't pay, y si tú no pagabas, y ya levantaban la familia, levantaban todo. ¿Por qué? Porque yo no pagué la cota. Y ha habido gente que le pasó eso, que por no pagar la cuota. Ya... Sí, los desaparecieron. Varias caso? gente. Israel's nephew was one of the men found beheaded in Sakan, 
and their 26-year-old son was recently kidnapped. They now believe he's dead too. Si está vivo o está muerto o dijeron pues, no dice nada. Así que eras por por dinero, era todo por dinero. Uh -huh. Todo por el dinero. Over the last year, the fight for Michoacán has only sporadically broken out into actual battle. In truth, it's more of a hunt. With many of the Knights Templar in hiding, a search is underway for local bosses and their hitmen. Francisco is only 15 and joined just a week ago. He told us his cousin was kidnapped, raped, and then murdered by the cartel. Her body was found in trash bags by a river. Saber que voy a matar a alguien me da terror. No porque me vayan a matarme, sino por yo matar a alguien. Porque tanto mucho mal que haya hecho él, él es un ser humano como yo. As they've taken over security operations from local police, the autodefensas have basically created their own justice system. We've just been told a sicario, or assassin, has been captured in Los Reyes. <laughs> 21-year-old Jose Eduardo was being held at a drug rehab clinic that had been turned into a makeshift prison. We sat down to talk to him. The autodefensa stayed to watch over our shoulders. Pues yo por falta de dinero trabajé de puntero. De puntero. Sí. Trabajaba de puntero. Sí. And the only thing you did was work as an informant, or you did something else. Lo único que hacías era trabajar de puntero, o te pedían hacer sí. otras cosas. No solo eso. Solo eso. Sí. Y no, no, eh, nunca te pidieron que mates a nadie. No, nunca lo hice. Nunca lo hice. We interviewed him for an hour, and his story didn't change. Aquí te están diciendo que tú estuviste involucrado en la muerte de alguien, o pues a lo mejor creen, pero no, no lo estoy. Está bien, eh, porque cuando cuando vinimos nos dijeron que tú eres un sicario, eras sicario. No. No. Y es una guerra contra nosotros mismos. Es entre mismos nosotros mexicanos, entre mismos hermanos, nos estamos matando unos a los otros. Y eso no, no, eso no debería ser, pues. El gobierno, si, si él quisiera, él acababa en un segundo. El gobierno, para eso es para las guerras. Today, Israel is burying his nephew, along with the others beheaded in Sakan. Paco's team has agreed to escort the funeral procession. The cemetery is in an area still controlled by the Templars. Michoacán now has one of the highest homicide rates in Mexico. Almost 300 people are killed here every month. This is a scene repeated over and over day after day. As they expected, the families here hadn't heard from the authorities. There was no active investigation into the killings. With no one to turn to, they said, the vigilantes have given them hope. When the Autodefensa movement started taking control of towns from the Knights Templar cartel, it was an embarrassment for the Mexican government. 
The country's president, Peña Nieto, is under intense pressure to resolve the crisis. He has deployed more than 9,000 soldiers and federal police to the state to try to regain control. But given the level of mistrust of the government that exists in Michoacán, they're having to tread carefully. At the Army's new base of operations in Colcamán, we spoke with General Hernández. La organización fue Policía Federal, integrarse a, 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 a las actividades como Policía de, de Seguridad Pública y Seguridad Pública a capacitarse. Basically, it's like all the local police here have just been sent to reform school, a move designed to sever their connections to organized crime. Meanwhile, the federal government has just done something even more surprising. They've made the controversial decision to legalize the militias turning them into what they call rural defense forces, a subunit of the army. Los que conocen la problemática y conocen ese tipo de personas son ellos. Entonces, existe una coordinación con ellos de tal manera que cuando nosotros salimos a recorridos, nos acompañan y nos sirven como guías, ¿sí? But to join the rural guard and keep their weapons, the autodefensas have to register with the government. In Mexico, citizens can't legally carry anything more powerful than a hunting rifle. ¿Cuántas armas tiene? Nada más una. Es una Browning calibre 12, semiautomática. Sí. How is the government and the military going to regulate weapons when self-defense groups have weapons like M16s? Is that authorized? I mean, can can they have an M16? Esa es otra situación. Son militares, no son civiles. Desde el momento en que son defensas rurales, son militares. Se sujetan a leyes y reglamentos militares. Cuando pasan su revista, les van a pasar uniformados con su pistola, con su rifle, y van a poder hacer recorridos en los lugares donde su problemática es bastante. It sounds good, but most vigilantes we met were suspicious of government control and don't plan to register. Others have criminal records that will disqualify them. Many of these men say they won't lay down their weapons. So what are you going to do about it? El gobierno tiene ya todo bien, perfectamente bien planificado para que esa esa problemática que estamos afrontando llegue a su término. Aquí vamos armados y vamos armados. But this cell phone video, recorded the day before we spoke to the general, showed how difficult he was finding it to control the self-defense group in Cualcamán. The public message, it's all under control, but we seem to be witnessing just how volatile the situation really was. As we returned to the base in Apatzingán, there was big news. This is the stronghold of the Knight Templars. We're hearing that around 500 members of the self-defense, the federal police and the military are getting ready to take this town. It would be the first big joint action since the government announced the plan to legalize the autodefensas. But the federal troops ordered the vigilantes to wait on the edge of town while they went into the city to make arrests. The Templars taunted them with threats over CB radio. We've been waiting here for around five hours and something's going on because these people are just not going to Apatina. We'll have to wait. Frustration over the government's control of the operation is building. While the vigilantes were waiting on the outskirts of Apatzingán, the message came through that the operation was over. The military and the police had retaken control without their assistance. 
In the end, they were finally allowed to drive through the town, their part reduced to a symbolic gesture. As we walked through the plaza that night, we were stopped by the family of one of the accused Templars. Who are they saying he is? They're saying that he is um, a mercenary for the uh, cartel, for the Templarios, but none of that is true. You say that the police is doing a witch hunt, they're going after Yes, they're anyone. just going after whoever, they're taking innocent people in. No se les ve nada. No tiene ninguna estrategia. No son gente que sepa hacer un trabajo real con el pueblo. José Manuel Mireles, considered to be the founder of the autodefensas, isn't ready to surrender his movement to the very authorities, he said, failed him. Ya, ya quieren borrar la palabra autodefensas, ya quieren borrar la palabra comunitarios. Se están robando el trabajo de nosotros. The government has made headlines again this morning. A top cartel leader, El Chayo, has been killed. But Mireles tells me the autodefensas were key to the operation. Ya ni nos mencionan en sus reportes. Aunque nosotros somos los que los llevamos, y mira, ven. Ven, mira, este es El Chayo. Chingatelo, este es El Chayo, ¿sí? Y ni nos mencionan, ¿sí? El objetivo del levantamiento es limpiar el estado de Michoacán. Y no nos vamos a detener. As the government struggles to prove itself, in towns all over the state, security remains in the hands of vigilantes. And as tension between them and the government increases, other problems are starting to emerge as well. It's five in the morning. I've come to meet Ramona and her family as they head to work in the lime orchards of Michoacán. They've had little work in the last few years. They say the Knights Templar manipulated the market and to keep the price of limes high, they only allowed the pickers to work a couple of days a week. But even though the Templars have gone, Ramona's family is still struggling. Ironically, it's the profits from these citrus and avocado fields that fund much of the autodefensa movement. Producers have gone from paying thousands of dollars to the Templars to donating the money to the movement. On the global market, the price of limes has never been higher. But here, the people at the bottom, the hundreds of field workers picking the fruit, are making less money. Como los pagan el dinero apenas va alcanzando para ir comiendo y pues para darles estudios a mis niños. De hecho ya el niño un niño más grande ya no está estudiando porque no nos alcanza el dinero para todos darles estudios. Y pues las cosas están subiendo y van subiendo pero el trabajo no, el trabajo sigue igual. Hola, ¿qué tal? This community supported the autodefensas when they organized here. Todos ustedes participaron, hicieron barricadas, hicieron rondas. La mayoría de la comunidad. Nuestras mujeres participaron también. But now they say they're angry, and that the autodefensas are essentially protecting local economic interests with private armies. Creímos que la situación iba a cambiar, pero tal parece que se nos empeoró, porque ahora los Los empresarios se están comportando de una forma peor que los templarios. Tal parece que tenemos otra nueva modalidad de delincuencia organizada que son los empresarios. For Uber and for his community living on the edges, there is little difference between the templars, the vigilantes or the government. Es muy difícil. Este ¿Qué te puedo decir? Esto es una cadena de explotación desde las grandes empresas de Estados Unidos hasta aquí, hasta nosotros. Todos son responsables. It's been a few weeks and we've come back to check on Paco's team. Quiero totalmente desarmado y no puede traer una carcomanía en sus camionetas de autodefensa, no puede traer nada. Things aren't going well. One of his men has gone rogue. ¿Qué es lo que hizo que es tan grave? Nos interesa 
que no está apoyando. Sí. Él no apoya barricadas, él no apoya levantar un pueblo. Y ya andan los reyes dando órdenes y él y le han dado dinero. A lo que yo me di cuenta, ya le dieron dinero la gente acá y no lo reporta. Entonces, ah, eso es. Él anda haciendo negocio. Nos echa a perder el movimiento. As Pakoski moves north, we've heard that the community of Taracuato has set up a roadblock and is protesting their advance. Queríamos hablar con alguien con, con, que nos cuente qué está pasando. Este, ahí los comunitarios agarraron a unos muchachos y dicen que les quedaron en los templarios y los bajaron bien mucho. Hola, pero... Con un alambre de púa. Ah, hicieron con un alambre de púa. Me acusaron que era puntero. Me, yo les dije. The two men were too scared to show their faces on camera, but told us they'd been held for two days. Y me golpean y me torturan con una bolsa cinco veces, me pusieron la bolsa como de a cinco minutos, me avientan a una pila, como tres veces me zamputieron para ahogarme. Unos tehuacanes, le echan a un bote tres tehuacanes y me lo ponían aquí para ahogarme. Down the road, the vigilantes are ready for a fight. All of these people are going towards where the indigenous community is, and they're saying that they're going to unlock this road. Vamos, vamos los, los estatales adelante y la gente civil atrás de los estatales. Poncho, one of Paco's lieutenants, manages to control the situation. They secure a detour on a different road. It's impossible for us to confirm what happened to the two men from Taracuato. The autodefensas claim the community was paid to protest by the Templars. But off camera, they also admitted they had indeed detained the two men and that one of the vigilantes had, in their own words, been too rough. As we prepare to leave Michoacán, trouble is growing for the vigilantes. There are allegations of cartel affiliations and infiltrators. Top leaders are fighting, and the government has made new demands to disarm. But still, their advance continues. Today, they're hoping to convince the indigenous town of Chirato to work with them. Word has spread that people here are distrustful of the well-funded Autodefensa movement and their strategy of moving from town to town. Before the rise of the autodefensas, the leaders here in Cerato created a community police to protect the town from the cartels. But there's a big difference between the movements. Here, they defend their town, but they don't go on the offensive, and there are few weapons. Nosotros les pedimos, venimos a informarles cómo está la situación, que no se preste a malos entendidos. Por ahí estamos enterados que no dejaron pasar a, él, a, lo, a esos cabrones de los caballeros templarios. Venimos a unirnos a que necesitamos limpiar nuestro estado. No nomás para Matácuaro, no nomás los reyes, Buenavista, necesitamos limpiar todo el estado. In an effort to build trust, the autodefensas give the community police some of their bullets. After years of violence and government complicity, the indigenous community in Chirato sees a common goal in the idea of self-defense. But the people here are cautious and fearful of what this new movement might become. Existen ciertas ciertas este dudas, no, pero poco a poco vamos a ir teniendo un acercamiento y ver en qué sí podemos apoyar, en qué no podemos apoyar, o sea, tomar nuestras propias precauciones para evitar que nuestra ronda comunitaria pues se, se eche a perder, no por así decirlo. Sobre todo lo más importante que es la dignidad, porque eso es lo cuando el hombre pierde la dignidad ya no tiene nada que, que defender. Ese es el bueno. 